and a very warm and cordial welcome to Hope for the Time of the End. Harold Zapata here with Advent on Ministries in the beautiful studios of your Loma Linda Broadcasting Network here in Southern California. Always reminding you, friends, as best as you can to support this uh, broadcast ministry going into over 200 nations around the world, nine different channels, uh, eight, seven different languages. What an honor it is to be part of this vision God has granted Ganem and the whole Daryl and Marlon and all the staff here, all the leadership at LBN. And thank you for the opportunity you've given me to share this Hope for the Time of the End series. We're kind of winding it down right now. We have a couple of messages left. Today, a very important message, I believe, will bless you in a special way. Open your eyes in a special way, I believe. The title is, Two Women, One Path. You know, the Bible talks to us about a God that passed by and saw an Amorite woman just uh, delivering a baby, placentia still, uh, <laughs> uh, right there, and she runs away, and the baby's left alone there by a rock. And... Uh, Umbilical cord still attached and covered in, in its own amniotic fluid and blood. And, and this God passed by and it was a baby girl and he washed, cut the umbilical cord and washed. And the baby girl grew up right in front of him and, and this God King fell in love with, with this young lady. The time of her love came, she became a woman. And uh, he, he put his covering around her and he bedecked her with all types of jewelry and and. Uh, uh, beautiful uh, anointments and set her to be a queen. And they lived together as husband and wife. The Bible talks about this relationship, this God King. And, and then this woman began to pay him, not as he had blessed her. This is an incredible story. It's actually found in your Bible in the book of Ezekiel in here chapter 16. Let's read most of the chapter starting here at verse 1. And again the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, cause Jerusalem to know her abominations, and say, Thus saith the Lord God of Jerusalem unto Jerusalem, Thy birth and thy nativity is of the land of Canaan. Thy father was an Amorite, and thy mother was a Hittite. And as for thy nativity in the day thou was born, thy navel was not cut, neither was thou washed in water to supple thee, thou was not salted at all, nor swaddled at all. None I pitied thee to do any of these things unto thee, to have compassion upon thee, but thou wast cast out in the open field to the loathing of thy person in the day that thou was born. And when I passed by thee, I saw thee polluted in thine own blood. And I said unto thee, when thou wast in thy blood, live. Yea, I said unto thee, when thou wast in thy blood, live. And I caused thee to multiply as the bud of the field. Thine breasts are fashioned, thine hair is grown, whereas thou wast naked and bare. Now, when I passed by thee and looked upon thee, behold, thy time was the time of love, and I spread my skirt over thee and covered thy nakedness, yea, I swear unto thee, and entered into a covenant with thee, and said, the Lord God, thou becamest mine. And then I washed thee with water, yea, I thoroughly washed away the blood from thee, and I anointed thee with oil. I clothed thee also with broidered work, and shod thee with badger's skin, and I girded thee about with fine linen, and I covered thee with silk. I decked thee also with ornaments and a beautiful crown upon thy head. Thou didst eat fine flour and honey and oil, and thou wast exceeding beautiful, and thou didst prosper into a kingdom. And thy renown went forth among the heathen for thy beauty, for it was perfect through my comeliness, not yours, but mine, which I had put upon thee, saith the Lord God. But thou didst trust in thine own beauty, and you played the harlot because of thy renown, and pourest out thy fornications on everyone that passed by his it was. 
Thou hast also taken thy fair jewels of my gold and of my silver, which I had given thee, and madest to thyself images of men, and didst commit whoredom with them. Moreover, thou hast taken thy sons and thy daughters, whom thou hast borne unto me, and these hast thou sacrificed unto them to be devoured. Is this of, of thy whoredoms a small matter? Thou that thou hast slain my children and delivered them up to cause them to pass through the fire of Moloch for them. And in all thine abominations and in all thine whoredoms, thou hast not remembered the days of thy youth, when thou wast naked and bare and was polluted in thine own blood. And it came to pass after all thy wickedness, woe, woe unto thee, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, saith the Lord God that thou hast built unto thee an eminent place and hast made thee a high place in every street and multiplied thy whoredoms. Thou hast also committed fornication with the Egyptians, thy neighbors great of flesh, and hast increased thy whoredoms to provoke me to anger. Thou hast played the whore also with the Assyrians, because thou wast unsatiable. Yea, thou hast played the harlot with them, and yet couldst not be satisfied. How weak is thine heart, saith the Lord God, seeing thou dost all these things the work of an imperious whorish woman. But as a wife that committeth adultery, which taketh strangers instead of her husband, they give gifts to all whores. But thou givest thy gifts to all thy lovers, and hirest them, that they may come unto thee on every side for thy whoredom. Wherefore, O harlot, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Because thy filthiness was poured out, because thy nakedness was discovered through thy whoredoms with thy lovers, and with all the idols of thine abominations, and by the blood of thy children which thou didst give unto them, behold, therefore, I will gather all thy lovers, with whom thou hast taken pleasure, and all of them that thou hast loved, with all of them that thou hast hated, I will even gather them round about against thee, and will discover thy nakedness unto them, that they may see all thy nakedness, and I will judge thee, as women that break wedlock, and shed blood are judged, and I will give thee blood and fury and jealousy. Nevertheless, I will remember my covenant with thee in the days of thy youth, and I will establish unto thee an everlasting covenant. And I will establish my covenant with thee, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord, that thou mayest remember and be confounded, and never open thy mouth any more because of thy shame, when I am pacified toward thee for all that thou hast done, saith the Lord God. Wow, what a story. What an incredible story. And of course, this is brought to us by a young prophet. His name was Ezekiel. Daniel was already, uh, and his uh, contemporary, older contemporary, he was already in Babylon. Ezekiel would have been among the um, <clears throat> later in captivity, coming later. He would have been there when the temple was destroyed. He would have been in the last of the captivity uh, and together lived almost simultaneously with Daniel <clears throat> out there in Babylon. And he saw how it was that Israel, they had already seen how God punished them. In Nebuchadnezzar in 586, and he took the people captive. And these kings, these last three kings of Israel, instead of coming to God and saying, God, forgive us, Jerusalem, Israel, this kingdom that God had brought out of nothing, out of Canaan, the father, an Amorite, the, my, your mother, a Hittite. And he brings them out of nothing, Ur of the Chaldeans, and makes them grow there and takes them down to Egypt, multiplies them greatly, takes them out of Egypt into the promised land, and the kingdom grows, and he bedecked Jerusalem, and he bedecked Israel with all sorts of protection, and, and the oracles of God, the sanctuary, the priesthood, all the elements, all the truths of God to bring righteousness into all the world so that all the world would know what happens when a nation puts God first and best. And yet what did she do? She gave her back to God 
And she went with the Assyrians, she went with the Egyptians, and she went a whoring. She did uh, basically abominations with them. Again, you think you're talking about Babylon. No, this is the church. This is Jerusalem. This is Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, Joshua, Samson, David, Solomon. These are the great stories of the Bible. And this woman played the harlot. And yet God still says, nevertheless, at the end, I'm still going to make a covenant with you and you're going to know how much I love you. That's the story in the Old Testament. Follow me with the same story in the New Testament. Revelation chapter 12. And there appeared a great woman, a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a, a crown of 12 stars. This is the, the church, the original church, the woman. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. This is Jesus. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Behold, the great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. That serpent of old called the, the dragon called the, the Satan and the devil. And his tail drew a third of the part of the stars of heaven, the angels that fell down with him. And they'd cast them to the earth and the dragon stood before the woman while, uh, once he was cast down to the earth. And he stood before her, which she was pregnant, pushing, sweating, about to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as the baby would crown and be born. Verse 5, and she brought forth a boy, a man child, Jesus Christ, who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron. And her child was caught up, raptured unto God and to his throne. But what happened to the church? And the woman fled into the wilderness. For she hath the place prepared by God, that they should feed her there for 1,260 days. But woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth a boy, the man-child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness. So we see the dragon following her into her place where she is nourished for a time, times and a half a time, 1260 days, which are 1260 years from the face of the serpent. And that serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause the woman to be carried away by the flood. But the earth, the United States, helped the, the, the woman, that church, the persecution that, the, that had arisen. And the earth opened up her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth, that great persecuting power in the dark ages. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant, not anymore the woman, the remnant of her seed, those that keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. What a story here. We have a beautiful woman bedecked with, uh, with beautiful uh, robes of righteousness. She is covered with the sun as if it will, and she has these beautiful moon at her feet. She's got 12 stars on her head. You got the foundation of the Old Testament, the New Testament. You got the covenants. You have the calling of the 12 disciples. You have the calling of the 12 tribes of Israel. This is the woman. And she gives birth, of course, to this Jesus Christ. He was caught up. And the Roman Empire tried to kill baby Jesus, but of course he was taken up to God. And so the Roman Empire and later the Papal Empire, Empire, Roman Empire went and made war with this woman. And especially in the last days, with not the woman any longer, but with those that are the remnant of her seed, those that remain, those that are left, those that are known as those that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of and testimony of Jesus Christ. But it says that this woman was given two wings of a great eagle and the woman began to flap them and the woman flew away. And she flew toward the direction of the wilderness, of that desert place. And right there behind her, flapping its ugly wings also, was this, this horrific dragon. And so the woman fled and the dragon fled and the great question is asked, what happened to the woman? What happened to the dragon? 
The dragon went after her. The woman went into the wilderness. And we don't read anything more in chapter 13 of Revelation or chapter 14 or 15 or 16. It's all the way into Revelation chapter 17 that we see what happened with this woman and this dragon in the wilderness. The Bible simply states in Revelation chapter 17 verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven veils and talked with me saying unto me, Come hither and I will show unto thee the judgment of that great whore that sitteth upon many waters with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So as we see, we see this, this entity, this woman fleeing into the wilderness, this woman being carried into the, into the wilderness. And, and now he's going to see what happens. He turns around in verse 3. We keep on reading. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. Remember that woman was given two wings of a great eagle and she flew into the wilderness and the dragon followed her into the wilderness. And what happens with that woman that was once clothed with the sun and the moon on her feet and the 12 stars? The same thing that happened with Jerusalem in Ezekiel 16. That woman, I saw that woman and now she's different. Same woman, but she, something happened in the wilderness. There was a transformation. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast. This is the same dragon. Keep on reading verse 3. Full of names of blasphemy, it also had seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold, precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her head was na a, a name written, mystery. It's a mystery. Why would a good woman start off well in covenant with God and finish like a whore playing the harlot? M oh, mystery. She has now a new name. It's confusion. Babylon, the great, the great whore. And then it keeps on saying, and the mother of harlots. She's not only... A woman, she's also a mother. So she, she leads a whole harem of harlots of other churches full of abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. She's a persecuting power. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman. And of the beast that carrieth her, which had seven heads and ten horns. Follow me closely. In the book of Matthew, Jesus talks about the ten virgins. And he says that all ten virgins fell asleep. All of them. All denominational churches, right before Christ returns, will fall asleep. How many? All. Ten is a number of all. Right? In the decimal. By ten. Deci. Ten toes on the statue of uh, Daniel 2 comes in the days of the last confederate team or, 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 or nations being one with the beast. Ten virgins means all, all denominations fall asleep. All. Even yours. Even mine. So that's why there's now a war against the remnant. Not so much the church, that church that started well in Revelation 12 becomes Babylon of Revelation chapter 17. And why is this? Ephesians 5 tells us why. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for the church, that he might sanctify and cleanse the church with the washing of water by the word. It's by our relationship with the Bible, the word of God, that we have washing and regeneration. And we, we become the ecclesia. What is a church? Ecclesia means ek from, klesia, kaleo, call. Those that are called out. As he calls people out and they leave the world, they form the church. But it's not just enough for God to take Israel out of Egypt. He's got to take Egypt out of Israel. This woman became like the statue of salt of Lot's wife, that she was now being delivered, but she looked back. 
and she became a statue of salt. This is the woman, the church, that Christ has washed with the word, and she allowed fallacies to creep in. Revelation 14, verse 8 tells us, as part of the great messages of the last days, and there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations become drunk with the wine of the wrath of her fornication. This is now called confusion. Babel, confusion, Babylon. Who is this Babylon? Let's look at the identification marks of Babylon. First and foremost, it's a worldwide church. Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 and 15, we read that this is the great whore that sits upon many waters. What do waters represent? The waters which thou saw at verse 15, where the whore sitteth are peoples, multitudes, nations, tongues, and kindreds. These are basically, it's it's a church, it's a woman, it's a church that has apostatized, used to be in covenant with God, but has a worldwide outreach. Number two, it derives from Babel. Babylon. It comes from the book of Genesis 10, verse 18 through 19, but we're just going to read a couple of verses here. And after Noah, of course, then Cush begat Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord, whereof it is said, even as Nimrod the mighty hunter before the Lord. And the beginning of his kingdom, the kingdom of Nimrod, was Babel and then some other cities in the land of Shinar. So follow me closely. Babel means confusion. Here's where in the land of Shinar they erected the the Tower of Babel of confusion and where God confused the languages. Also right there in the land of Shinar, in the plain of Shinar, is where uh, Nebuchadnezzar erected a 90-foot golden statue of himself and made all nations bow down and worship him. Very important this point. When we talk about Babel, there are doctrines of Babel and teachings and preachings of Babel all throughout the Bible. Let's see if we can put some of these together. Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 18. The children gather wood, fathers kindle fire. The women knead their dough and make cakes to the queen of heaven and pour out drink offerings and to other gods that they may provoke me to jealousy and anger. Jeremiah 44, 17. But we will certainly do whatever thing goeth forth out of our mouth our own mouth, to burn incense unto the queen of heaven, to pour out drink offerings unto her as we have done. We and our fathers, our kings, our princes, in the cities of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem. For then we had plenty of victuals and we were all well and saw no evil. But since we left off burning incense to the queen of heaven, pouring out drink offerings, we have wanted all things and have become consumed by the sword and by the famine. And when we burned incense to the queen of heaven and poured out drink offerings unto her, Did we make her cakes to worship her and pour our drink offerings unto her without our men? So this is all priests, kings, fathers, children, mother in Jerusalem. And they're they're worshiping not God, they're worshiping the queen of heaven. This is Babylonian at the core and burning incense to her. Ezekiel 8 keeps on saying, verse 13, He said unto me, Turn thee again, and thou shalt see even greater abominations that they do. Then he brought me into the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north, and behold, there sat women weeping for Tamas, the son of the queen of heaven. Then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. And he brought me into the inner court of God's house, and behold, right there in the temple, twenty-five men and they gave their backs to the, toward the temple and gave their faces toward the east, and they worshipped the sun toward the east. And then he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Is this a light thing that the house of Judah, that they commit these abominations be here before me? For they have filled the land with violence. They have returned to provoke me to anger. Therefore I will also deal in fury. My eyes shall not spare, neither will I have pity. And though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice, Ezekiel, yet I will not hear them when the final destruction of the temple and Jerusalem take place there in 606 with uh, Nebuchadnezzar again at the third captivity. We are talking about great apostasy right at the very end of a a time of judgment that's about to come. Did you read how it was that the whole 25 men, 24 priests plus the high priest, 
they were all giving their backs toward the temple and they were worshiping toward the east and worshiping the sun. You know, this area of the world, Babylon and Egypt, all this area was only sun worship, especially Egypt. And I want you to put this on the screen here. In Egypt, Semiramis became known as Isis, the queen of heaven. Nimrod became known as Osiris, the husband's son of the queen of heaven, Semiramis. They had a love child called Tamus, also known as Horus, the sun god. In Phoenicia, Semiramis and Nimrod were known as Asherah and Baal. In Greece, Aphrodite and Eros. In Rome, Semiramis and Tamus were known as Venus and Cupid. And in Mesopotamia, she was known as Ishtar, from which we get Easter and the Assyrian Babylonian goddess of fertility and sex. And of course, her symbols were the egg, the bunny, and many of these are the same symbols of fertility and sex. And after Constantine, the Roman emperor, decided to Christianize Rome, Easter was basically changed just to represent Jesus' resurrection. But it has roots, Easter, from Ishtar, as about celebrating fertility and sex. Even Christmas, the Mass for the Christ, Christ's Mass. On December 25th, it's the very date when Tamus' birth takes place because that's when the sun begins to lengthen its light. And the worship of pine trees on high places was basically the worship of Tamus. So we have Nimrod, the worship of a false god, Semiramis, the worship of a false queen of heaven. And then we also have the worship of Tamus, the son of the sun god. Can any of this have any fulfillment in our day and age? Well, our time is almost up. I want you to stay tuned for the next part of this very message titled, Two Women, One Path. The main thing we have to ask ourselves right now as we're finishing this broadcast, how is my heart today with the Lord Jesus Christ? Can I see how he has blessed me and you and taken us out of Egypt? Should our cry not be no, now Lord take Egypt out of us? Hasn't he blessed you and prospered you don't we owe him fidelity? Has he not established an everlasting covenant of love with you and with me? As for me and my house, we will worship the Lord. I hope the same thing for you, my friend. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for watching Advent On with Harold Zapata. We pray you've been inspired to grow in your personal daily walk with our Lord Jesus Christ. If you'd like to learn how to partner with us to take the whole truth into the whole world, stop by adventon.org or send your prayers and financial support today to Advent On Ministries, P.O. Box 333, Loma Linda, California, 92354. Preparing the way, restoring the truth, and uplifting Jesus' life. This program was a presentation of Advent On Ministries, Loma Linda, California.